I want to take a few moments here to share with you the things that I think are the most critical, the most key strategies that you could put in place to extend your life expectancy, to get more health and vitality, to slow down the aging process, to get all the stuff out of your health that I think you'd probably like to get out of it. So let's go ahead and dive into those. So number one, of course, everybody has heard you've got to eat right. You've got to have good nutrition. I want to take a few moments just to talk about some more of the specifics because the things that you've been taught are by and large, I think, really incorrect. I hear a lot of people going on about things that are just outdated concepts. So the first one is this whole low fat diet thing. Throw it away. It's irrelevant. What's more important, of course, is not whether the diet is high in fat or low in fat, but rather that the sources of fat are actual natural sources. What I mean is that we've got some fats that we've invented, that we've created, that never existed before, but we've made in laboratories. Trans fats, in other words. So you find these, of course, in a lot of different processed foods, but the fats that you're gonna find from beef, from pork, from things like that, those are fine. Now, that's not to say that there isn't anything else in there to be concerned about, but the fats are fine. Don't worry about the fat content. What do you need to be concerned about? It's gonna be preservatives, right? So take a look at this, for example. We've got this um, fantastic little uh, McDonald's meal here. And this is true, by the way, whether it's McDonald's or Burger King or Wendy's, you name it, they're all the same. I've tried this experiment with a couple other ones. This hamburger here is a, about a year and a half old. We bought this back in July of 2010. It's currently December of 2011. Uh, so about a year and a half old now. Um, you notice that there's no mold on anything, right? This bun, no mold, no mildew, no rot, no bugs, no ants, no roaches. Rats don't want to mess with it. There's just nothing that seems to touch this thing. I actually, unfortunately, did have a mouse in the place for a little while, and this is just sitting out. We've got this on this place sitting out on the countertops all the time, and uh, mouse didn't want anything to do with this thing. So um, the meat here, if we're going to call that meat, you, again, you notice that there's nothing wrong with it. It's not turning into oozy, gooey liquid. It's not rotting. It's not putrefying. It's just going to be the same forever and ever and ever. I know somebody else has done the same kind of experiment, and theirs was 12 years old, and they compared it to one they had bought earlier that day, and you just couldn't tell the difference. So when our meat's full of preservatives and stuff like that, it makes it very difficult for us to get any nutritional content out of. Of course, the preservatives are all quite toxic in themselves. And think of it from this perspective. You're made up largely of meat, aren't you? Aren't you mostly muscle and such? Well, if the preservatives do this to meats, what do you think that they're doing to you? So this is a much more important thing, I think, in terms of meats, is to make sure your meats or have no preservatives in them. And if we're talking about a cut of meat that you've got to cook yourself, it's probably fine. There's probably not going to be any preservatives put in that other than, again, probably sausages. Sausages are always going to have something like that. But all of your lunch meats, all kinds of preservatives and stuff in there, and I would stay away from those kinds of things uh, by and large. Hot dogs are the worst culprit. Any of those kind of hot dogs, bratwurst, things like that, those things are just so full of artificial stuff that they probably, even without cooking them, probably wouldn't rot just like that uh, hamburger over there either. Okay, so the other thing that's really important about nutrition is getting high amounts of nutrients, right? Vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, phytonutrients. So let's talk about some simple strategies to know how and where to get those. The more color your fruits and vegetables have, the more nutrients they've got, right? So the darkness and richness of their color is a great indicator as to whether or not they're chock full of antioxidants and phytonutrients or not. Iceberg lettuce, hardly green at all, almost white. Little to no antioxidants and nutritional content. Romaine, a little bit better. Spinach, now we're getting somewhere. The dark red and green leafy lettuces, now we're really, really talking, right? So the darkness and richness of color, and by the way, the very things that give those fruits and vegetables their color are nutrients. This is why white wine has got no health benefits to it, but red wine does, because the thing that makes the red grapes red is a antioxidant, right? So I don't know why they tell people to drink red wine for their heart. Why don't you just eat red grapes? That way you don't have to deal with any problems with the alcohol. Um, so get a wide spectrum of different colors in your diet and make sure that you're going for the things with the most richness of color. And that's the other key uh, critical strategy and step there I would recommend. Other real quick things, make sure that you're getting a uh, fish oil or better yet, a krill oil supplement. Your brain is made up of 40% by weight a specific fat called omega-3 fats, and you really want it from either a fish oil or ideally a krill oil. The reason I say ideally a krill oil is that not only then do you get the omega-3 fats, but you're also getting the uh, benefit of a really powerful uh, antioxidant in there that the fish oil just doesn't have, okay? Um, flaxseed oil is great for your heart, 
but it's not good enough for your brain. It's not the right form of omega-3 for your brain. So you might want to take both, but if you're only going to take one, I'd make sure that it's either the krill or the fish oil. Um, I would also take a whole food supplement. What that means is that unlike a vitamin, which is completely laboratory made and synthetic, and a lot of times just not the right form that your body needs, a whole food supplement is where they take actual real fruits and vegetables, they concentrate them down into a capsule form, take out the proteins and the fats and the carbohydrates in most of them. Some of them leave that stuff in as well. And then what's left behind is all the nutritional essences of these uh, different fruits and vegetables. So the current recommendation of how many servings of fruits and vegetables we should be getting every day is nine to 13 servings of fruits and vegetables. And I think very few people are even remotely close to that. So again, don't take a multivitamin. Study after study shows that they don't increase the supplies of the nutrients in your body over time, that they actually deplete the supplies of those nutrients in your body over time. A whole food supplement, on the other hand, has plenty of research to suggest that it increases it the longer and longer you take it, the higher and higher the levels of those vitamins and minerals and antioxidants become detectable in your blood, okay? So <clears throat> um, you also might wanna consider a vitamin D supplement depending on what part of the country you live in and what season it is. And the reason I say that is, of course, our bodies are supposed to be able to make their own vitamin D from cholesterol, by the way, um, when we get exposed to UV sunlight, when you get your skin exposed. So if you're in long sleeves like I am right now, not going to be very much vitamin D production based on that, even if the weather is bright and sunny outside, which today it doesn't happen to be. So now that it's winter time, the days are shorter, we're not going to be able to make very much vitamin D. Skin tends to be covered up with long pants, long sleeves. So now is probably a good time to take some vitamin D. Cod liver oil is a great source of vitamin D where you can get your uh, omega-3 fats at the same time. Um, but if you're going to take a pill form of vitamin D, you want to make sure you're getting vitamin D3. All right. So I would say get it from the sun if you can. Having your body make it on its own is always the best, but to be able to do that, interestingly enough, you gotta have enough cholesterol, right? All this stuff we've heard for so long about how bad cholesterol is for you, all the latest research is reversing that and suggesting that actually having your cholesterol too low is the bigger problem rather than having it too high. I'd say if your cholesterol level is too high, what that's an indicator of is that you've been stuck in a chronic fight and flight state and that that's the real problem, deal with that, and then you not only will you reduce your risk of heart attack, but your cholesterol levels will come down on their own. All the research studies that have looked at what happens when you take the statin drugs have found that, yes, they do bring down your cholesterol levels, but they don't reduce the risk of heart attack. So it's hardly worth taking them, especially when you look at their incidence of uh, diabetes and uh, arthritic changes that happen as a result of those statin drugs. So let's move on then. Water, of course, everybody knows they need to drink it, right? But let's talk something uh, about what type of water specifically. Um, number one, first and foremost, the absolute best form of water is the water that you would get out of fruits and vegetables. That's the one that I would say is ideal. As the plants have pulled it up from the soil, it's kind of gone through its own bit of filtration process. So by getting lots of servings and fruits and vegetables in your diet, you're getting a bunch of water out of there as well. Now, not enough, you're still gonna have to drink some water. So then the type that you drink, I suggest the best form of that is gonna be spring water. Spring water has ideally either trickled down over the mountains or bubbled up through the ground. And again, it's gone through a bit of a filtration process, nature's own natural filtration. And along the way, it's also picked up a lot of great minerals. And those minerals make it easier for your body to absorb. So you can get better absorption out of your water by having some minerals in there with it. The next best form of water is gonna be what's what we call reverse osmosis. Reverse osmosis or RO filtration is a very intense type of filtration. It strips out almost everything out of the water, um, not quite as completely as the distilled water. And I'd say that distilled water is now stripped too pure to where, again, it's gonna be very difficult for your body to absorb it. There's nothing to grab a hold of. Um, normally the way we absorb water is we grab a hold of a, an, an atom of sodium or chlorine or something like that and when you move that across the cell membrane, the water follows along with it. That's what they call osmosis, right? Um, so when your water is 100% pure like distilled water typically is, it's a little bit tougher for your body to absorb and utilize. Reverse osmosis, well, we've done a good job of stripping out all the bad stuff. And by the way, you absolutely need to get rid of the bad stuff. About uh, 80 different um, prescription medicines can be detected in almost every city's municipal water supply, meaning your tap water, it's got a whole bunch of different prescription medicines in it, right? As your next door neighbor takes their Viagra or their birth controller or whatever, their kidneys filter it out of their blood, 
put it in the urine, they pee it out in the toilet, it gets flushed and goes to the wastewater treatment plant. There, of course, they remove toilet paper and sediment and all that kind of stuff. They use bacteria to convert the ammonia into safe non-toxic forms. They use chlorine to now kill off the bacteria. They add fluoride uh, <clears throat> and then they pump it right back to you. Nowhere along the way do they really do anything to strip out pesticides, artificial fertilizers, um, insecticides and um, weed killers and stuff like that that everybody sprays on their lawn, nor the paint thinner and stuff that you pour down your drain when you clean your paintbrush, nor do they thin out or uh, filter out all the different prescription medicines. So you can detect pretty uh, significant levels of those things. And if you don't want to be taking your neighbor's medicines and all of your neighbor's medicines, nor drinking their paint thinners and all those kinds of things, then you want to put your water through a real strict purification process. And reverse osmosis is probably the better one there yet. All right. So the one other thing to talk about is that while I suggested that, of course, drinking uh, <coughs> spring water and reverse osmosis filtered water, those things are usually going to come in a plastic water bottle. There's a little bit of concern about plastic water bottles, no doubt about that. They can contain a chemical called BPA. It's what makes those plastic water bottles uh, flexible. If you don't have BPA and then the plastic is hard and rigid, putting some BPA or bisphenol A in there makes the plastics soft and squishy and moldable. And then what that does is it causes obesity in humans and it causes infertility in humans. So you wanna probably drink out of something other than plastic water bottles like that, or at least we'll look for one that is BPA free, but those can be somewhat difficult to use because as you're sucking water out, the bottle can't collapse in and so it can be difficult to get any water out of those things. What's a better choice? Best choice, glass water bottle. If you can get your own washable, reusable glass water bottle and then refill it with a big jug of spring water or your own reverse osmosis filter system at the house, which by the way, you can get an under sink unit for about 150 bucks. It takes just basic plumbing skills to install. They're really uh, simple and easily, uh, easily acquired. I just re recommend going on eBay and picking up one of the units off of eBay for 150, 125 bucks, something like that, okay? All right, so that's basically everything is to talk about with water. Um, the next thing, of course, is gonna be activity. So. Everybody always talks about that you gotta exercise. Um, here's some interesting statistics. We found that when you look at diet alone, exercise alone, and diet and exercise together, almost all weight loss comes from the diet component. Exercise alone doesn't really do a lot for weight loss, unless you're doing some really, really intense training like for an Ironman or a marathon or something like that. But if you're doing your basic hour of cardio three to five times a week, not gonna lose a lot of weight just by the exercise component alone if you keep eating the way you've been eating. If you do diet and exercise together, that is only just barely better than the diet alone. Most weight loss comes from the diet component. However, you absolutely positively still need to be active. Notice I didn't say exercise, but you need to be active every single day. Why is that? Because our brain needs the activity. Take a look at this little uh, device right here. So this is a flashlight, right? And you can see that I just turned the switch on. It's not making any light. When um, we move this, it starts to create a little bit of light now. Okay, So it doesn't take batteries. Instead, what it does is it's got these electrical surfaces inside that when they move past each other, creates electrical charge that powers the bulb. And this is exactly the same way that our brain and nervous systems work. When we move, our joints and the nerve endings in our joints move past each other and that creates an electrical charge and that stimulates and activates our brain. So the brain, of course, gets some stimulation and activation from our five senses, um, vision, hearing, taste, touch, and smell, but the overwhelming majority of it comes from movement against gravity, right? Or what we call mechanoreception. Another name for it would be proprioception. So mechanoreception is about 80% of your brain's input and stimulus, but park your butt in a chair and sit at a desk all day and not only does it start to affect how energetic you feel, it also starts to slow down your brain. This is, by the way, why if you ever had one of those days where you decide just to spend the whole day on a couch watching movies, sports games, things like that, at the end of the day, hey, you've rested all day, right? You've done hardly any activity. You basically just sat there. At the end of the day, do you feel all charged up and energized and ready to go? Or do you feel like a nap, right? On the other hand, if you ever had one of those days where it was just go, 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 busy, 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 do, 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 it's at the end of the day, you still feel pretty energetic and pretty ready to do things most of the time, right? So staying active charges your brain and it's gonna help your brain to stay young as you get older. 
it's when we start to get into the rocking chair and we just sit there and hardly move at all throughout the day, that's when our brain really starts to slow down and turn to mush. Right? So that's why I think exercise is important, not so much for their waistlines, but we need that activity for our brain. So it doesn't have to be exercise, it can just be being active. I'm very, very fortunate in that my job doesn't give me very much time in a chair. I've got a little bit of paperwork I've got to get done, of course, all the time, but by and large, I'm up moving, walking around from table to table, patient to patient. I've got a very physical type of job, so I get most of that just through my day-to-day -day activity at work, and of course I do just a little bit of exercise just to keep my muscles strong. All right. So the next thing, then the flip side of that coin is rest. We of course got to have rest, and of course rest could include sleep, but it also includes other things like vacation time, time alone, those kinds of things, and those are critical too. I know so many people right now that just they can't remember the last time they took a vacation. They just don't take time away. Business is uh, occupying all their time or they don't have the budget for a vacation or something like that. So they are not taken as vacations. I personally have never found a vacation to cost me money. Now of course we spend money while we're going on the trip. But what I mean is that when we get back it always creates a boost in our business that getting refreshed, rejuvenated, re-energized and passionate again again about what I'm doing helps my practice to grow every time we take a vacation. So we're finding that when we take a few more vacations per year rather than less, we get better results in the practice. By the way, of course, that means the patients are getting better results too. My business doesn't grow if my patients don't do better, so it means I'm doing a better job, I'm doing better work, I'm more productive because I've allowed myself some time for rejuvenating and refreshing myself. Right? So, I recommend very strongly take the vacation, whatever your budget allows for, even if that means it's a staycation and you just stay at home and do other things other than the basic day-to-day -day grind kind of stuff, um, but take those vacations. And we don't have any kids, but if I had children, I can absolutely say I would have some family vacations where we took the kids with us, and I'd have some where the kids went to go spend some time with grandma, and uh, my wife and I went off by ourselves. I think that that time, uh, just husband and wife is really important. Uh, instead of it always being just mommy and daddy time. So then as far as sleep goes, people have lots of questions about sleep. What's the right position to sleep in? What type of pillow should I be using? What's the best bed? And so on. So I'll take a real quick run through of those things. Best possible position to sleep in is on your side. Next best would be on your back. Rotating between the two sides and the back is great as well. The one big no-no here is stomach sleeping. And I know a lot of people are in love with sleeping on their stomach. They think they get the best night's sleep. They fall asleep the easiest. Um, however, what they're not realizing is that they're not sleeping, they're not unconscious. There is a difference. When we uh, turn our head all the way to the side, it closes off one of the two arteries that go up through the neck into our brain. One of them will get crimped off. And when you crimp off that one, you decrease the brain's blood supply and oxygen, therefore, by about 50%. Now what that's done effectively, it's put you like into a choke hold or a sleeper hold, and you get knocked unconscious not because you're so asleep and getting so much refreshment and rejuvenation, but rather because you're just knocked out. Brain doesn't get enough oxygen. So get off of your stomach and you'll start to find that when you wake up in the morning, you feel a lot more refreshed and a lot more ready to go. Okay? Not to mention mechanically, having your head turn like that for hours at a time is real hard. If you try to do this right now while you were awake, turn your head as far as you can and hold it there, you could probably do it for about three minutes before all of a sudden it started getting all stiff and locked up. Um, and just because you're asleep, it doesn't make it any better for you. So it's really bad for your spine. It's bad for your brain. Get off the stomach. Pillow choices. The best thing to do in terms of pillow is, number one, get one that's going to retain its shape all throughout the night. What I mean is that these down-filled pillows or the ones that have got buckwheat or rice or any of those kinds of things inside of them, they move. They squish. So you fluff the thing all up. You get it situated just right. You fall asleep. You wake up in the morning. And your head's like this because everything has moved out into the corners and there's nothing right here underneath your head anymore. So get a pillow that holds a shape throughout the night. I recommend that it be this thickness, whatever that is for you, but however thick this space between the edge of the shoulder and this is, so that when you're sleeping on your side, you've got the proper support and you're not here or here. And then when you're laying on your back, if you bring it down low enough, your pillow should hit you just a little bit low where uh, a necklace would sit on your back. That should be about where the bottom of it is. Um, when you've got it sitting down there like that, that should also have this in pretty good alignment rather than having your head pushed forward. Two pillows or three pillows, that's a big no-no. All right, now if you've got them stuck between your legs and wrap your arm around one, that doesn't count. I mean, around your head. Two or three pillows around your head is a big no-no. One pillow needs to fit just right. 
okay? Now, if you're especially, especially broad shoulder, just a really, really big guy, um, and it may very well take two pillows to fill the space. You just may not be able to find one quite big enough to fill that. You also want one that's fairly firm, right? The one that's all fluffy and you lay on it and it immediately goes, not so good. One that's got a bit of firmness to it, I'd say medium to medium firm is really what we're looking for there. Um, and a lot of times pillows are labeled based on their firmness. So look at the label and if it says medium or medium firm, that's probably a good uh, strategy to go with there. As far as beds go, um, <coughs> I like an inner spring mattress. Um, a Tempur-Pedic style memory foam one. I've never had a patient who had good results with those. Every patient that's gotten one uh, has told me that they wish they could get rid of it, but they've spent so much money on it now that they're going to keep punishing themselves and torturing themselves for the next 15 years until they feel like they got the money's worth out of it. Um, water beds, nah, I'm not so nuts about them. I'm not I'm totally opposed to them either. Um, I think the problem with water beds is that you constantly keep having to mess with getting the right amount of water in there because water does eventually evaporate and it creates an air pocket and then it makes noise and you gotta let your air out and it's too much work, right? So an inner spring mattress is usually a better choice, but you wanna get one that has got zones in it. What I mean by zones is that it's not the same stiffness of spring up at the top as it is in the middle as it is in the bottom. You get different stiffnesses in different areas so that you can get the proper um, cushioning here and the proper support here, or the same thing is true if you're laying on your back. The absolute best bed out there is made by a company called Chirobedic, C-H-I-R-O-B-E-D-I-C.com. Chirobedic, they make mattresses that are custom made to your height and weight. They're not any more expensive than a decent mattress from a regular store. Um, you can go to their website and check out the basic concept there. And they do require a prescription from a chiropractor, so if you're interested in that, contact your office and I'll be happy to help you out with that. All right, so um, <clears throat> next is gonna be positive mental attitude. Positive mental attitude includes a handful of different things. It, of course, includes things like loving, nurturing relationships, job satisfaction, some sense of spirituality, whatever that means for you. But then the big one of it, it really is stress release. Okay. Now, notice I didn't say um, eliminate stress. That's not possible. You cannot eliminate stress. What I mean by that is that you could take one stress. Let's say your uh, your marriage is causing you stress. Well, you could get a divorce and you've eliminated that stress, but now you have a different one. Now you got financial stress because you got half the income coming in, yet you still have to pay, of course, for a full house payment and those kinds of things. Um, so you're just trading one stress for another a lot of times. You don't like your boss, you quit, you go get a different job, now there's somebody else different that you don't like, or it's a different type of work. Hey, if you find a job that's just completely stress-free, zero stress whatsoever, please let me know. I got a million people looking for that type of job. Uh, I might have to take that one myself as well, right? They all are going to have stress. Instead, what we want is we want to be able to release the physical effects of stress. That's where the, uh, the real magic is at. So doing things like yoga, tai chi, meditation, things like that, they change things inside of your body, inside of your physiology, that helps to bring you out of the fight and flight state and back into rest and digest. And this is really critical. If you're stuck over in that fight and flight state, your body doesn't heal, it doesn't repair, your immune system gets turned off, you change your cholesterol profile to make more of the bad, you jack up your blood pressure, you do all the things that you hear about that are bad for you long term when you're in that fight and flight state. We wanna get back into rest and digest, but because today's world is very different than that of our ancestors. Remember, once upon a time, stress meant something was trying to eat me or I don't have enough to eat. But by and large, that was about it. There really weren't any deadlines. You didn't have, of course, bosses you had to deal with. It was just simply that either there's food or something's trying to eat me. And either way, the stress is usually fairly short term. One way or the other, either uh, you made it out of there okay or you didn't make it out of there and it was now done and over with. Um, <clears throat> but today's stresses, they're all long, drawn out, chronic. They're not nearly as bad, right? Probably nobody's tried to eat you recently. You probably haven't been attacked by a tiger or a bear or anything like that in a long, long time. But today's stresses are constant, they're chronic, they're long drawn out. There's every day, you're busy, right? Have you ever had a day where you just said, boy, I can just take as much time as I need to today to do whatever it is I gotta do, or do you always feel like there's a lot to do, I gotta go, gotta go, gotta go, hurry, 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 right? So this is one of the major sources of stress, is those kinds of things, and we need to release the physical effects of that. So again, things like yoga, tai chi, meditation, those kinds of strategies are great for that sort of stuff. Body work like massage, chiropractic adjusting, those are fantastic strategies. Um, however, they take time. And since again, one of our bigger sources of stress is that there's too much to do and not enough time, doing something else that takes more time sometimes can only make the stress worse. 
So I like using things that are technology based that don't eat up a lot more time but actually help us to multitask. So one of the best, simplest, and least expensive choices like that is going to be um, using what they call Hemisync CDs. And um, <clears throat> Hemisync CDs basically are just listening to CDs. It's not just relaxing music. It's not waterfall sounds and that kind of stuff. Rather, it's using specific sound tones that change your brain waves, right? So no um, hypnotic suggestions, nothing subliminal in there. It's just changing brain waves, just like if you ever sat in front of a fire. You know, a whole group of people gets together, they're all sitting around a fire, everybody's chatting away, and in a few minutes, everybody just sits there in dead silence. Why is that? Because a fire flickers at a specific frequency, and that frequency happens to be the same one that is the brain wave that says, just sit there and relax and don't do much of anything, right? So that's what everybody eventually does when we've had that visual feedback for a little while there, and our brain waves start to fire follow the uh, and entrain to the frequency of the flickering of the fire. Well, we can do the same thing with sound, since it's not so convenient to carry around a fire with you everywhere you go, but you can carry around a CD pretty easily, right? So um, these CDs, they're inexpensive, $21 here in our office, and they allow you to do other things at the same time. You throw a little CD player on your hip here, some headphones on, and you do need to use headphones, and then while you're doing the dishes, while you're um, helping the kids with homework because you listen to it quietly in the background so you can still hear somebody else talk, you can still watch TV, so you can do this at the same time as you're doing other things, perusing through your email inbox and all that kind of stuff at the end of the day. Um, you can be doing some hemi-sync CDs and helping to bring yourself out of that fight and flight state. It's a really good combination for that sort of thing. Okay, um, Other ones, this is a little bit better technology, of course a little bit more expensive but still pretty inexpensive is gonna be biofeedback. And biofeedback is a service that we offer here in the office. However, you can buy the equipment to do it yourself at home for about 300 bucks, so not too terribly expensive there. Um, the Journey to Wild Divine is one system that I think works fantastically for that. And you can Google the Journey to Wild Divine and you will be able to uh, find out about that. Biofeedback basically is just measuring the state of arousal, or in other words, whether you're more in fight and flight or rest and digest, and then you play games that help you to learn how to bring yourself out of fight and flight into rest and digest. And the reason this is a little bit better than the Hemisync is that the Hemisync works only while you're using it. The biofeedback is something where you can learn how to exactly do I breathe or what thoughts do I need to have or what do you need to do to move yourself out of that fight and flight state into rest and digest all on your own. So now when you're getting chewed out or reamed or you just had an accident or anything like that where you're really, really uh, worked up and, and um, <clears throat> in a bad, bad state of mind, then you can say, okay, if I breathe in for the count of this and out for the count of that, I know I can start to bring myself out of that sort of thing. Even a little bit better than that is going to be neurofeedback. And neurofeedback uses the same concepts except for now we're hooking up sensors directly to your brain. Well, I should say to your skull, not to your brain. Uh, we're hooking up the sensors right here and it's measuring your brain waves directly and it works even a little bit better and faster than the biofeedback but it's not the sort of thing you really want to do on your own at home. You really do need to do it in somebody's office. That's another service that we do offer here in the office. And it's the, uh, the creme de la creme as far as the sort of thing goes, no doubt about that. Um, <clears throat> so the next strategy, the final thing I want to share with you is that if you really, really want to be healthy, you want to get the absolute most out of all of the other things that we've talked about, you've got to have a great functioning nervous system, right? Your brain, your spinal cord, and your nerves control everything that ever happens in your body. Everything that you ever think, say, do, experience, or express as a person is all processed through the nervous system. And we can get these bits of interference in our nervous system. Picture like a bad cell phone signal somewhere between your brain and some body part, whether that be an organ or a muscle down in your leg or on your arm or something like that. And when you get that kind of interference, that bad cell phone signal, the body stops working the way it's supposed to. You lose your ability to heal and repair all on your own, and all of a sudden you're now relying on pills and stuff like that to regulate your blood pressure and your cholesterol and things like that for you. So we want to get that nervous system working back the way it's supposed to, because let's say you take all of the best, most perfect organic fruits and vegetables, and that's all you eat and that's what you live on but the brain can't talk to the gut so well, now you're not gonna absorb nearly as much out of the fruits and vegetables that you're eating. Let's say that you're getting all of the sleep, the hours of sleep that you need, and you're taking your vacations, but your brain is stuck in this constant fight and flight state, you're not gonna get the full benefit out of those things there as well either. 
<clears throat> the same is true for all of the other facets of health that we've already discussed. If you don't have proper communication between the brain and the body, then these things are not going to give you as much benefit as they otherwise could. So how do you get one of these bad cell phone signals, or what we call a subluxation in your nervous system? Just like in your house, you have a circuit breaker that trips on purpose to protect your TV and your refrigerator and all your cool stuff against overloads of electrical stress. Well, in our bodies, we don't get overloads of electrical stress all that often, but we do get overloads of physical stresses. In other words, slips, falls, bumps, bangs, being too sedentary because you had to sit in a desk all day. <clears throat> we also get overloads of chemical stresses, all the artificial junk in our food, air, and water. We also, of course, get overloads of mental and emotional stresses, and that's pretty self-explanatory as to what that means. So just like that circuit breaker trips to protect your TV and your refrigerator, your body creates these subluxations, these nerve interferences on purpose to kind of dim down the stimulus, so to speak, um, and to kind of block parts of it so that it doesn't do any damage to your brain or your immune system or your heart or any body part. However, just like with that trip circuit breaker, it's a great short-term strategy, but a terrible long-term strategy, meaning that if a circuit breaker trips and your refrigerator doesn't get damaged, that's great, that's fantastic, However, if it stays like that, you're still going to have to go out and buy all new food because your food is going to spoil and run in that refrigerator because it got no electricity anymore. If somebody goes out and resets the circuit breaker, now it all works the way it's supposed to again. And the same is true with these subluxations. There's something that used to happen only kind of in the most extreme situations once upon a time, but now with our lives being so much faster paced and so much more stressful, they're happening on a day-to-day -day basis. And so many of us are not able to kind of correct our own subluxations anymore. I would say most of us are not able to correct our own subluxations anymore. We go and do health fairs and screenings on a pretty regular basis and when I'm doing these, the equipment that we use to measure for subluxations, I find them on probably 99% of the people that I'm screening and checking out. And it's not at back pain fairs, it's at the Southern Women's Show where I think I'm getting a pretty wide variety of all kinds of different, well at least women and a handful of men. And then other times where I go to other health fairs and I've got a wide variety of people across the board <coughs> who say that they're very healthy, but nonetheless, we still find these nerve interferences and subluxations. And most of the time when I sit down with a person and say, here's where I'm finding the problem in your case, here's the body parts connected to that, here's the kind of problems it could create for you, they say, how did you know that? I didn't tell you I was dealing with those allergies or with a constant nausea or things like that, and yet you told me that, and that's exactly what I'm dealing with. This thing's kind of like a crystal ball. So, the best strategy I could recommend for you, even above and beyond all of the other things that we talked about as far as the diet and the water and the exercise and so on, is get your nervous system checked to see you, if you and your family and your kids especially have any of these subluxations. The kids are getting them from very, very early ages, from birth on, are getting subluxations. And because they're in a developing state, their nervous systems are affected even more by the subluxations than our adults. It can, of course, affect their ability to learn and understand what's going on around them, to focus and concentrate. It can affect them in so many different ways that are really critical at those early developmental uh, stages. So I definitely recommend that you give us a call and you come and you get checked out to see if we could do anything to, well, number one, find out if in fact you do have any subluxations. If you do, then of course I'll lay out a plan for you of here's what it would take to correct this and here's the kind of benefits you could expect to see in your particular case based on where we find your particular subluxations. So I hope that gives you a little bit more insight and a little bit more information about some of the basic steps and strategies for being and stay healthy, but then also we talked about a few things that are probably new to you and different, and I certainly hope that you're able to take some great steps with those. If there's anything that we can do to help, either giving you more specific guidance, we've got a creating wellness center that is just designed to help make customized lifestyle improvements in terms of you, what you should be doing in terms of diet and exercise and those things, a customized program for that sort of thing, please give our office a call and let us know. If you think that perhaps maybe these subluxations could explain some of the health issues and challenges that I'm having, or I don't have any health uh, challenges right now, I don't like the idea of there being something interfering with how well my brain works, and so I want to make sure that if I've got anything like that, I get it corrected right away because I want to stay well, then that makes the most sense to me as well. And why don't you come in, in the office, we'll do your consultation for you at no charge. I'll also do the examination for you at no charge to find out if in fact you do or do not have any of these subluxations. And then we'll be able to tell you what the next best step would be. So all you have to do is call our office, 912-748-1506. Mention that you watched the video on the six facets of health 
and then we will be uh, able to do that consultant exam for you at no charge. All right, so I thank you for your time. I hope you got some great stuff out of this, and I look forward to talking to you again soon.